Hello, Lisa. Welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Sure. Happy to be here. Great. Uh, as I think you know, this week uh, we're devoting First UU Online to Voices from the Congregation, talking about what the church means to them in the lead up to our annual meeting after the service on Sunday, the 7th of June. Um, so that's a big topic just to toss in your lap. Um, let, let's start with this. You and John came to the church how many years ago? I don't remember anymore. Um, we started coming right after Sebastian was born, and he's almost seven, so. Okay, okay, okay. Not quite seven years. And you came from, and you told me earlier, because I'd remembered it wrong, uh, the Unitarian Church in Chandler, Arizona. Yep. Is that where you found Unitarian Universalism? Um, sort of. I had a friend in college tell me, Lisa, I think you're a UU. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I did some reading and thought, oh, yeah, you're probably right, Sam. I probably am. Um, so when I moved out to Arizona to take my first teaching job, I knew I needed a, an instant family and found one there. Terrific, so. terrific, terrific. Um, this is maybe an unfair question, but you volunteered, so we'll shoot. Um, what have been the highlights um, of your time here at First UU Columbus? Um, well, I think being in the Beloved Conversations program has probably been the thing that has grounded me and helped me the most. Mm -hmm. um, but I also really enjoy singing with the choir when I can. My, my schedule isn't super accommodating at this point, but they're always super welcoming when I hop in there. And I really appreciate that and love singing with them, love hearing them when I'm not singing with them. Yeah. Um, we had a great time at the Labor Day retreat uh, oh, probably maybe four or five years back. Okay. So yeah, those are some highlights. Um, and for people who don't know about Beloved Conversations, can you say a little bit more about that and what you appreciated most about your involvement? You've been a facilitator as well. Yeah, um, it's a, a program. I, I, you probably know more background than I do, but um, an yeah, anti-racist but... curriculum. Um, but uh, written by the FOS Collaborative, I think, which is, is part of the seminary in, in Chicago. Is that part right? Absolutely right. Uh, Yay! Sophia Lyon Foz was a pioneer religious educator in our movement back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And it is the educational collaborative at Meadville Lombard in Chicago is named in her honor. Okay. And that's as much as I know. <laughs> well, that was more than me. So, um, I, yeah, I was a facilitator for that program without having gone through it beforehand. Um, and so I'm a teacher, I'm a music teacher, and looking through that curriculum in advance of facilitating it, I just was blown away by how thoughtful it is and how um, just really well designed the activities are and the discussions are. Um, so not only is the content good, but I thought the structure was, was fantastic and really helped me connect more to people within our congregation and also to some other organizations locally. Great. And I want to back it up a little bit. Um, I know the program, but I'm not sure everyone in the congregation does. What is the goal or subject matter? Oh, did I not say that it's an anti-racist curriculum? You may have. I forgot it. <laughs> no, I, I probably just skimmed right over it because it's like at the forefront of my sure, mind sure. frequently. Uh, yes, it's uh, designed to help people have better conversations about race and, and act more effectively also. Thank you. I think I think you've got it. I think you've got it. And this year, the um, the class got about halfway through, and then we needed uh, self quarantine. Um, and the groups have been meeting, but not necessarily um, working on the subject matter of the curriculum. Um, so it's sort of a hybrid year. Um, our plan is to bring it back next year. Um, and with that in mind, what are your hopes for the congregation in the future? That's a giant question. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I hope that we're able to have lots of conversations about what the congregation's hopes are. I'm, I'm coming at this at, from the angle of being board chair next year. Yeah, I didn't, inter um, I didn't mention that in the introduction. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. So um, I, I see the board's purpose as, as to fulfill the mission of the church through what the congregation wants to have happen. Um, and this is a really interesting time to be talking about what, who we are and what we're doing and why we're here together. Um, 
I guess my first hope is that we can have some great conversations there and have some actionable things come out of that. Great, great. Um, one of the things I was talking to Tony um, Strayback, who's been helping manage the program this year. Um, we've done a year and a half of it now. After the first year, um, the last session is devoted to where can the congregation go next? And we had three sessions of three different classes um, or sections of the class. Um, and we literally and intentionally put all of those materials, there's a lot of newsprint, put them literally on the shelf to say, we need more critical mass. We need more people who have gone through the program. Um, we are dusting them off and keeping them un dust free as possible and we'll bring them back. Um, hopefully we'll be able to do that under your board leadership uh, tenure and see where we go from here. Is there anything else you'd like to say to folks, Lisa? Um, let me just check my, I wrote a couple bullet points before we started. So. Hey, good. Do, 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 do. Well, so the one thing that I guess I haven't talked about is how, what the church means to Sebastian. To oh, good. Our, our child. So I, I grew up, my parents were youth directors in the UCC church where I grew up. And so that place was like my second home. Um, and it was really important to me that Sebastian feel as welcomed here as I did in my congregation growing up. And um, I, I'm just really grateful to the, to everyone who sees him and welcomes him and recognizes the humanity in a tiny little six-year-old boy who's often running around, so. Well, and he's a one of many beloved little six-year-old um, no disrespect, Rugrats. He's a, he's a great, very lively young boy. Yep. We love them all. And he's a real kick. I don't know, you often sit in the front of the worship center when we used to gather in person. And um, he was always fidgeting and laughing and finding something to remark about. I've always enjoyed watching him. I think one of the one of the things I love about the online services we're having right now is that he's not missing any of the hymns. <laughs> he's oh, right with them, that's singing great. everything. He's not going off to class. That's a, you know the RE thing happens at a separate time. And that's been great. great. Well, and as a music teacher and someone who loves to, loves to sing, that's terrific. I'm glad. I'm glad that's working. Yeah. I'm glad that's working. Anything else? You have other bullet points, Lisa. Uh, no. That was All my right. last one. Well, we will keep this short and sweet. Thank you very much for your time. And um, congratulations again. We look forward to a great year next year. And um, to everyone, look forward to seeing you at our annual meeting online on Sunday afternoon following the service. Thank you all. Take care. Lisa, welcome back. We had recorded our conversation a week ago. Um, it is now Tuesday late afternoon, June 2nd, and you got back to me over the weekend saying you'd like to re-record um, in light of the George Floyd murder, I'll call it that, and the protests um, both in Columbus and around the world. Um, what else would you like to say, Lisa? I, well, it, it, I just feel like everything that's happened this weekend um, has kind of focused and sharpened what I need from the church and what the church mm. needs from me a little bit more. That's um, so, and I feel I'm, like I can art <laughs> Keep going, that sounds great. <laughs> I just feel like I can articulate what I mean a little bit better now, which is that I need the church for spiritual sustenance. Um, weekends like the one we've just experienced are incredibly incredibly difficult and i am saying that as a white person who can't even imagine what a person of color or a black person is feeling right now um and so i need the church as a place for healing um and i'm actually looking forward to the uua event that's happening tonight to hopefully right. get some of that for myself um and because it grounds me and prepares me to go back out and keep doing the work um and the learning and so i just wanted to make that super clear, I guess. And I may not be remembering details, but I know you are doing the work. Uh, you brought some of your other either teachers or African American students to a couple of our events at the church a few years ago. Um, so I teach for Columbus City Schools um, in a predominantly 
Well, it's not really a predominantly black school, I guess. It's a, a very racially diverse school, primarily students of color. Um, and so I do a lot of restorative justice kinds of content in my classroom and a lot of culturally responsive teaching. And so there's a lot of that kind of thing with my students, but we also, um, I did bring a couple to a, a, I think it was a bread event maybe a few years ago. Maybe. Or it was something about immigration. Uh, oh, I know it was about the municipal ID okay. program. Okay, okay. Um, and I'm involved with Restore CBUS, which is a kind of an arm of Ohio Organizing Collaborative, I guess is our umbrella structure. Um, but advocating for counselors, not cops in classrooms and in schools and doing those sorts of things, so. Terrific, thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. And um, this may be presumptuous, but congratulations on um, becoming our next board chair. Um, may it be, and I, I know I shouldn't say this, the universe has ears, a less interesting year than this last one. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Lisa, thank you. Is there anything more you want to say? I don't mean to cut you off. No, I don't think so. All right. I appreciate it. Take care. My Thanks. best to John and Sebastian. Thanks Bye. again. Bye-bye.